Some of the power series that we've done, like sine and cosine and e to the x, in fact, all three of the ones that we've looked at so far, they, they converge for all values of x. Meaning that if we, if we get enough terms, and by enough terms, it could be like a billion terms in the, in the sequence, but if we get enough terms, then we can find any value of sine or cosine or e to the x within whatever error we want. So... Um, for the purposes of this class, we like things to be within one one thousandth because we round to the nearest thousandth uh, or three decimal places. We could get that accuracy for any value of sine as long as we get enough terms. So if we want to know what sine of, say, 31 is, we could write out enough terms in the, the power series for sine to figure out what the sine of 31 is within one one hundredth or one one thousandth or, or one one hundredth or even one one billionth if we wanted. Um, the problem, though, is it, it might take a lot of terms. So to start with, let's look at this. Let's say we use the ninth order Taylor series for sine at zero. So remember, the Taylor series for sine is x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the x to the ninth power term. If I plug pi into that for x, then it comes out with a number that's about 0 .007. Now, you guys know, what is the sine of pi? Zero. zero, right? You guys knew that, right? Okay, of course you did. Um, so that's pretty close, isn't it? So if we use the polynomial x minus x to the cube over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial minus x to the seventh over 7 factorial plus x to the ninth over 9 factorial and stop, just cut it off right there, and we put pi into that, we get a number that's about 0 .007, which is really close to what it should be, which is zero, right? Now, it's not within our accuracy for this class because we rounded the nearest thousand, but it's pretty close. It's really close to zero, okay? If we try that same ninth order Taylor series for the sine of 31, now, does anybody in here know what the, the sine of 31 is? The answer is no. You don't know what the sine of 31 is. There's nobody in the world that knows what the sine of 31 is, okay? Unless you just happen to memorize that random number, okay? But what do you know about sine? The value of sine is always between what and what? Negative 1 and 1, right? So if we take the same Taylor series for sine at 0, so going up to the ninth power, x to the ninth over 9 factorial, and we plug 31 into that, this is the number you get. You get 67,635,301 point something. It goes on forever. It's a, well, it doesn't, doesn't go on. Yeah, it does go on forever. It's an irrational number. Do you think that's very close to the actual answer? Probably not. In fact, we know it's not because we know the actual answer has to be somewhere between negative 1 and positive 1, right? So it's really accurate for a number that's fairly close to zero. Pi is kind of close to zero, right? It's just a little bit bigger than three. But we don't have to go too far. We get into the 30s, and it's way off. So what can we do to make this more accurate, rather than going to x to the ninth over 9 factorial? OK, we could do that. Or let, let's use what we know right now first. That's what he just said. Let's do something that we know how to do right now first. If I want it to be more accurate, I could add more terms. So I could add x to the 11th over 11 factorial minus x to the 13th over 13 factorial. Okay, And, and that's going to work. That's going to do it. But it's going to take 86 terms to get within the same accuracy we had at pi. So to get within 0 .007 of the actual value of the sine of 31, it's going to take 86 terms. Does that seem very practical? Yeah? Yeah, okay, let's do that then. Uh, or we could do what Alec and Joe just suggested and center it somewhere else. Instead of centering it at 0, we could center it somewhere closer to 31. Now, we wouldn't want to center it at, say, 30, why would we not want to center it at 30? Let's, let's think about what we know about the sine function. Why would we not want to center it at 30? What's the sine of 30? Does anybody know? The sine of 30 is 1 half. 
Oh, the, you're in degrees. We're going to do radians in this uh, class. Yeah. <laughs> but the chain rule is kind of mean to us. If, if, okay, so, guys, we don't know what the sine of 30 is without plugging it into a calculator. And remember, we get the power series by evaluating the function and its derivatives at some value. So if, if we have to use the sine of 30 and then the cosine of 30 and then the opposite of the sine of 30 to build our power series, we're going to have a bunch of long decimals in there. And that's not very practical, right? So what would be a better choice, something that we do know the, deriv the value of sine and its derivatives that's close to 31? 10 pi. 10 pi. Because 10 pi is going to be about 31.4159, so on, right? It's going to be really close to 31. So if we write the power series for the sine of 10 pi, or 10, I'm sorry, if we, evaluate, if we write the power series centered at 10 pi, then what we get is a picture that looks like this. Instead of getting this red function, which is great really close to zero, it's really close to sine close to zero, but it goes off to infinity really quickly outside of about pi, we can center it out here and get this green function. And what's the difference? This is just the first two terms of it here. But what's the difference between the one centered at 0 and the one centered at 10 pi? What did I do? So all we did is we shifted this right here. We shifted it over 10 pi. And so every x that we have here, we take x minus 10 pi. Remember, the shift is the opposite direction of the sine. So by taking x minus 10 pi, or replacing each of the x's with x minus 10 pi, we get the green function here, which is just 10 pi to the right. And I want you to look at this. This number right here is the value of sine at 31 out to 15 decimal places, I think. I don't really feel like counting that number or how many there are, this is the value of the Taylor series out to 15 decimal places. It goes all the way to about the 12th decimal place before there's a difference. So we get 67 billion by using the red one. We get a number that's within, well, I mean, any accuracy that we want um, or any accuracy that we could really possibly want um, just by shifting the same function over. 